So I'd like to have Mr. ask Mr. Richard Johnson of uh, DHS to come up and talk a little bit about common controls and heritable controls. Uh, thanks, Dave. Cool. So Exacta 360, this is going to be great. Um, I'm telling you, it, an advanced inheritance is going to be even better. Um, at DHS, we have roughly about 800 uh, major systems. This isn't including uh, all the miners and the EISs or external information systems. But we have a lot of systems, and each uh, one of these systems in, uh, pr provide controls. Um, almost all systems can provide controls because we're, we're really cloud-centric at this point. So that means hundreds of systems are providing, and then hundreds of systems are then consuming those controls. Um, and this gets extremely complicated, especially since at DHS we're roughly 13 components. And with 13 components, we, you know, we don't speak to each other like we should. So inheritance gets to be a mess. Um, so what advanced inheritance is going to do for us um, is fourfold. Number one, the provider is now the, the, the gentleman, the person uh, that is going to decide how you're going to inherit the control. In the past, we've actually gone from the consumer's perspective. The consumer reads the control, and they get to decide whether or not it's fully inheritable or, or hybrid. Uh, so at this point, we're going to go from the uh, perspective of the provider. Uh, so this is going to cut down on confusion. A lot of mistakes are going to be uh, eliminated because of that. Um, secondly, uh, they've, they've put in 360 uh, a, what they're calling the inheritance questionnaire. Um, this is going to be a, a great help to us. Um, uh, and the questionnaire is going to be used, uh, for example, we have several data centers. Um, you get different services depending on which data center you actually reside. So what's going to happen is we're going to have a question at the department level. Are you in data center X? And if you are, you're going to get controls from several different places. Uh, you'll get it from maybe a mainframe, maybe uh, an authentication service. Uh, maybe you'll get it from multiple data centers uh, depending on where you, at or where you are in the organization. Um, so this is going to be a great help. Um, the ISSOs will have the ability to actually um, you know, know what they're getting um, when they answer the question properly. We also have what's called the CISO common controls, and this is what the dash ones are, the, you know, the policy statements, um, you know, AT1, AC1, things like that. Um, this, the question will automatically be asked, are you part of headquarters? And if you're part of headquarters, you'll get their uh, CISO controls, and you'll get the department controls. If you're part of, say, FEMA, then you'll get the FEMA controls and then headquarters controls also. Um, so that's, it's just going to be great. Um, thirdly, uh, it, it's giving us a, a map. The ISSO is going to get a map uh, showing what controls they're inheriting and which controls they're, they're actually providing. Um, and fourthly, the approval process. This is, is going to be great too. So instead of the department level uh, deciding that if you're in the data center X, you're going to get all of these controls. Uh, you can then, as a consumer, go out to individual systems. Maybe they're small systems. Uh, you'll be able to get those controls one-on-one, -on -one, and then there'll be an approval process. So you ask for the control. Uh, the, the provider either approves or rejects, um, and then you have that control. Um, so th these four things are just going to make it an, an enormous... Uh, uh, I have no idea what the word is, but it's going to be great. <laughs>